the resilience uh, project. I'll say a few words about it, not too much. Um, it's a long story, hopefully uh, we'll last. Um, what brings us together uh, today is um, the, the wish and the need of the project to hear uh, the research community um, and to learn about the uh, specific features of doing research in religious uh, studies in, in uh, Southeast, Southeast Europe. Uh, I think we have a, um, a very uh, capable uh, lineup of speakers today uh, from um, five different countries with uh, various backgrounds and um, you know, various experiences as well. So I, I don't think we should be wasting any time um, but I have a duty to briefly, very briefly introduce to you the resilience, hoping that you will on your own uh, at some uh, point later uh, acquaint yourself with, uh, with the project. Uh, let me try now to share my screen with you. Okay. Um, so this is, I'll try to be very brief because the, the, the story is really as I said, long. Uh, resilience is uh, short for religious studies infrastructure, tools, experts, connections, and centers. So um, it's not research project, it's research infrastructure building project. That's uh, at least that's what we learned yesterday in a focus group it's uh, the, the, the concept of the religious, in, uh, re, uh, sorry, research infrastructure is not that common to us, but uh, hopefully that uh, introduction of that uh, concept will be one of the benefits of uh, joining uh, events like this. Uh, so it's supposed to be a unique interdisciplinary research infrastructure for all religious studies, uh, which aims at building high performance platform, European platform, uh, which, will, which would supply tools and big data to scholars from all scientific disciplines across religions. Um, I think we, uh, we will share with you this presentation uh, afterwards. So the goals are you know, spelled out in detail. So I don't have to read all of them. There are like seven or eight uh, project goals. Um, the first one, is becoming the main European research infrastructure for all religious studies. Uh, some of you might know, some might not, that religious studies until recently were not considered what one of the um, uh, strategic areas in at the European level. And uh, actually the idea of religious studies being an important strategic research area uh, faces um, res some resistance still from some EU member uh, states, as you can uh, imagine. So uh, the fact that EU decided to fund a project which aims to become a uh, research infrastructure uh, at, the Europe, at the European level uh, in itself is, is a notable development. So let me uh, skip because it would literally took us a lot of time to go through all the goals. Uh, the consortium uh, at the moment consists of I think 12 or 13 uh, universities, I think 12, 12 uh, 13, sorry, 13 universities from um, all over the Europe, including um, Greece, Bulgaria, uh, Albania, Bosnia, and then um, France, France, Germany, uh, Netherlands, and that's, that's I think, uh, Italy, of course, Italy. Um, the key words in this project are data, tools, expertise, digitization, and new approaches to religious studies. Uh, in numbers, and I'm about to finish, um, the whole project, if successful in all its phases, is supposed to last for about 30, 34 years. Uh, as I said, we have 13 partner institutions from eight European member states plus three associated countries. Uh, in terms of the timeline, this is how it's supposed to look like. Um, the, the, the idea was for about six, seven years in fruition. It took a, a while to convince uh, European uh, authorities to support this idea. Currently, 
uh, we are finishing this design uh, design uh, phase, um, extended until September 2021. Uh, hopefully, hopefully next four years will be there will be funding for preparation, and then implementation is the um, you know a next phase, and hopefully uh, full operation uh, starts in about 13 or 14 years and lasts for 20. 20 uh, years. Uh, services are the most interesting part of uh, the project for researchers, for librarians, uh, for uh, managers at institutions, for NGO sector, uh, especially faith-based NGO sector. Um, the, the services that uh, Resilience hopes to offer could be grouped into several research enhancing services, research enabling servicing, research data management and data data center. Uh, those are spelled out in the slides below. So I will I will share this uh, this with you after the after the event. So we run by the slogan serving research, building knowledge, building knowledge. So thank you very much. Uh, Ahmed, I think I squeezed it into five minutes. So uh, now, um, of course, we are open for your questions uh, afterwards, but let me go back to, 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 to um, Zoom. Um, what we aim today is to hear from all of you, first from our speakers, but then from all of you, uh, the needs. We, we would like to identify the needs so that we can refine the services that are being um, planned. Okay, uh, and therefore to be able to serve the real needs of researchers, not what uh, some of us thought uh, research, research community needs. Uh, that's all from me for now. And uh, I would like now to introduce our first uh, speaker. We will go by the, by the program. Uh, Professor Fikret Karcic is Deputy Dean for research at the Faculty of Law uh, at the University of Sarajevo here. He has um, 40 years of research experience in religious studies. Uh, he, his main field uh, is uh, comparative legal history. And uh, just to mention that he, he's, he's, been, he's published quite a lot, but um, to indicate the, the kind of research he has done uh, recently, his MA, uh, which, is, which was on Sharia courts in Kingdom of Yugoslavia, which means interwar period, uh, has been recently published in English. So uh, that research was done mainly on archives, um, which tells you about the lasting value of what he has done uh, then. Uh, Professor, um, would you please now share uh, some of your ideas on the issue of specific features of doing religious studies in the, in the region? Mike is yours, thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. Good morning to everybody. As Ahmed mentioned, uh, by education, I'm legal historian. I have been dealing with the history of Islamic law in former Yugoslavia, and after that, extended my interest in other Balkan countries. So basically, what I'm going to talk uh, is uh, connected to that background, to that uh, aspect of my formation. And uh, I, I will add some of my impressions about the other fields of the study of religion. When we talk about specific features of religious research in the Balkans, I think we uh, should keep in mind several factors. First, religion pluralism in the Balkans. When we look into history of the Balkans, we may see actually in literature that uh, very often, that region is uh, described as a region in between. So that position in between is, was manifested during uh, ancient times, uh, border between Eastern and Western Roman Empire. After that, uh, border between Western and Eastern Christianity. And after Ottoman conquest, border between Ottoman Islamic uh, world and uh, European world. Uh, during uh, second uh, after period of the Cold War, it was uh, uh, in between from uh, Soviet uh, Soviet dominated countries at the one side and uh, 
free liberal world at the other side, etc. So that position uh, in between uh, was manifested itself in the religious pluralism in the Balkans. And we can see that all uh, major religions and their denominations could be found in the Balkans. So another feature uh, which is related to the religious pluralism in the Balkans is uh, syncretism or combination of the different ele elements of different religions in the religious practice of a particular people or particular group. And we have uh, studies about that as far as Bosnia is concerned. We have studies of the manifestation of Islam in Bosnia as a uh, and, and syncretist element in it. And also we can find that in other parts of the Balkans, I will mention just that, for example, two Balkan cities are very important when we talk about pluralism, Salonika, Thessaloniki, Thessalonik in Greece and Sarajevo in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, second point, which I would like to highlight is that uh, in the Balkan countries, study of religion as academic discipline emerged relatively speaking late. So when we look into history of the Balkan countries, we will see that most of them acquired uh, independence during 19th century and that independence uh, was related to anti-Ottoman uh, struggle and anti-Ottoman wars. For the purpose of nation and state building uh, during 19th century in Balkan countries, uh, emphasize was on the development of historiography and historiography was uh, used for that purpose, for the purpose of the nation and state building, ethnography, linguistic, etc. But there was no, there was no uh, beginning of the academic study of the study of religion as academic discipline. And after that, uh, during the period between two world wars, uh, it it was a relatively stable situation in the Balkans. After Second World War, in number of Balkan countries, a communist regime was established. And that regime, as we know, generally did not encourage uh, research in the field of the study of religion. It was uh, under Marxist influence that uh, religion was supposed to die out and uh, no serious study of religious practice until liberalization of the communist regime was done. Uh, so during that period, as far as former Yugoslavia is concerned, uh, religion was studied only at the Department of Sociology in the form of sociology of religion, but that was done also from the uh, ideological point of view as a kind of critical or criticism of religion and religious practice. And for example, in former Yugoslavia, only in since 1970s, we had we had study of religiosity as a sociological phenomenon. Uh, in recent times, study of religion in the Balkans encountered several challenges, and I would like to mention some of them. First is the lack of the proper academic framework. Uh, again, here I will confine my, uh, my uh, talk on the experience uh, in former, Yugos former Yugoslavia. And uh, you may add later on during debate, uh, what, what is the recent situation in other countries. But basically in uh, former Yugoslavia, still we don't have departments of the study of religion as secular discipline. So what we have is actually that religion is studied at uh, uh, faculties of theology and we have faculties of theology which are part of secular universities. But secular study of religion does not exist as far as I know, at least in former Yugoslavia and may, maybe later on we will see what the situation in other countries. Uh, only in, uh, in Sarajevo, there was one a project which lasted for one generation at the Center for Interdisciplinary Research to have MA program in religious studies. And that was, as far as I know, the only uh, program of such nature in Bosnia and Herzegovina. 
A second uh, challenge for the development of study of religion in the Balkans is the lack of expertise in, in the manifestation of religion in the Balkans. So uh, basically what we need is not a dogmatic uh, survey of the teaching of, of great religions, but the religious practice. And uh, we see recently, for example, in, in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina that foreign uh, anthropologists and foreign sociologists, uh, they are paying more and more attention to the manifestation of uh, popular religion. Uh, the third uh, challenge is the lack of funding for research in this field. Uh, research in this field is, is not uh, encouraged and uh, fundings at, uh, at least until recently were not available. So consequence of, consequence of these developments are visible in fact that best contribution to the study of particular religion and I, I will here mention uh, especially study of Islam, which is in my focus. Uh, so basically we see that the best studies of Islam, for example, are done by foreign scholars, not from the scholars from the Balkans, or at least uh, they are originally from the Balkans, but they were, they were working, working within framework of European institutions. Uh, so this is a list of, of my, some of my thoughts, which I wish to share. Uh, I think for the time being, uh, I will stop here and uh, I, will in, I will later on, I, I will participate in debate, which will follow. So thank you for your attention. Microphone, Professor Ahmed. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Fickett. Uh, very systematic as, as usual, as, expect, as as expected, and I think very useful for us to develop uh, the, the rest of the uh, workshop. Um, I don't think I should take in time to repeat what you just said. Uh, I may do that uh, at the end when we hear from other uh, speakers as well. So thank you. Um, Ivan, uh, Ivan Ayub Kostic, uh, is a PhD uh, stu student at the Department of Political Science, University of Belgrade, uh, doing his research, his uh, thesis on uh, the organization of young Muslims uh, in Bosnia and in former Yugoslavia. And he's also director of the Balkan Center for the Middle East. Um, he's young, uh, but young researcher, but has already published quite quite a lot. So Ayub, thank you for joining us and mic is yours. Thanks a lot, Ahmed. Uh, I will just add that, you know, that <clears throat> beside uh, this, what I'm doing that Islamic uh, political thought or let's say political science, I'm doing a lot for last couple of years, the research that are dealing with the position of Muslims and Islam in uh, Serbia and also beside that uh, the relationship with religion and politics, uh, nationalism and national identity. So, uh, but I will start and uh, uh, with one, uh, let's say, thought or quotation more uh, from one of the eminent uh, intellectuals from uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, who said this uh, already during the second half of the 90s, this is Professor Dr. Mustafa Imamovic, who said that in that moment, he, that was some kind of an interview, and uh, he said in that moment that we live in the region where, uh, where uh, in the, not only in the region, but in the time when the myths and not academically based research are those that are absolutely dominant in our, in the, in the, in the dominant, in the, in the region of former Yugoslavia. And what we have is the phenomenon of the production of myths and mytholog mythologized histories, academic research, or in other words, we can say that this is some kind of quasi-academic re uh, research as such. And then, of course, if I speak about Serbia, and this is my intention today, 
to focus on and just to present the main problems and obstacles in Serbia is this, let's say, quasi-academic or let's say highly ideologized and politicized religious or any other academic research that we have. Because if we start from the presumption, yeah, that the that if the, we we start from the presumption that research or that uh, should be conducted in a free and uh, not hostile environment, the key question, if we are talking about Serbia, is that can we speak and discuss about the research in a society? where the research um, is not, unfortunately, free, and where the researchers are very often under the constant pressure and threat. Uh, I will give you my example from, from my research until now. So <clears throat> I was, uh, why I'm, first of all, I, I don't know from, from I, I suppose that many of, of the, the listeners today and participants are maybe familiar or not about the situation in Serbia, which is uh, absolutely uh, uh, for the last two or three decades ruled by very authoritarian regimes, uh, which are beside they are authoritarian, they are highly ideologized and they are promoting a very exclusivist and very, uh, let's say, uh, aggressive type of national ideology and which influence and penetrate all the aspects of social life and also uh, penetrates the academic institutions, which means uh, consequently that we are speaking, that we are facing the lack of the academic freedom constantly. We had very uh, recently the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the government of Serbia tried to close down the last academic, free academic institute in Serbia. This is Institute for, for Philosophy and Social Sciences. And then in the, and, and, uh, regarding this incident or this, uh, this uh, move by Serbian government more than 100 most you know, famous and uh, respected intellectuals around the world signed the petition where they are asking or urging uh, President Vucic, current president of Serbia to stop this persecution of uh, academic, free academic research and, and, and so on. So what is my question? What I am, uh, uh, what I would like to raise is that, uh, uh, and that you, that I you know uh, uh, try to to make familiar you with the, with the situation of the researchers here that we are functioning in extremely extremely under extremely high pressure, um, what and that of course means that you know we are very often faced with the lack of uh, first of all funds possibilities to implement our research in the first place, uh, that we are ostracized, uh, pressured outside from the, from the academic sphere, and so on and so on. And this is not something new. This is going on for, for decades now. But now, from 2012, when the ruling uh, uh, party now today took uh, uh, power again, um, uh, so uh, my, and, and in this sense, you know, so now I describe the, re the, the, the role of, let's say, the religion, uh, sorry, the, the, the government, but in the same time, the faculties, the, the institutions, institutes, sorry, academic institutes, they are, all of them, they are highly dependent from, again, the government. So we have this very you know, a problematic situation when all the institutions, academic institutions are dependent from the government and the, from the budget of the government. And of course, if I depicted and uh, the, 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 the nature of the government and the regime in Serbia, then you can imagine what is the situation in, the, in these academic institutions. If you're speaking freely, if you're criticized, if you're doing some research that is not going uh, you know, is in line with the ruling or dominant ideology and, and patterns of, of thoughts or ideas, then you are 
uh, in deep, deep trouble, can be in deep trouble. So, and I, I don't want to bother you with numerous examples of people who have been uh, sacked or threatened or intimidated by the, the government if they are doing something like this, if they are doing uh, something, uh, you know, some critical reflections of the reality in Serbia. Uh, all of this, what I'm telling is, of course, extremely dominant in the field of religious studies, especially if you're dealing with the studies that are dealing with religious minorities in Serbia. Because this, and here we uh, come to the, uh, to, the, to the story, or let's say to the role that Serbian Orthodox Church has, which is very influent, influential in Serbian society. And Serbian Orthodox Church with the government is also pushing, you know, this uh, very one specific type of ideology. And, and uh, you, if you go against or let's say criticize any moves by the Serbian Orthodox Church or, or, or critically involved with the, for example, the, the relationship with, uh, between Serbian Orthodox Church and national ideology and national identity and what they are promoting, you are again in the position that you will be absolutely ostracized and maybe, you know, uh, 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 even declared as some kind of foreign element. This, for example, uh, happened to me <laughs> personally. So I was in a couple of times, I was in, this, in the position or in, in the situation that I was di directly threatened. And by the way, I was, I was someone who, by the way, lost my job uh, as assistant professor at the fac faculty because of this uh, trends and situation in Serbia. So uh, now we are coming to the, uh, 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 what, uh, and I just want to uh, make one remark uh, what uh, Professor Karcic, uh, who I respect uh, enormously, said about the secular, uh, uh, secular uh, research of religion. We have the best example is in Belgrade. We have this, uh, uh, let's say, department, which is uh, called uh, uh, Politicology of Religion, which is uh, uh, led by famous, uh, let's say, I would use this word because I don't know any other word for him, is uh, Islamophobe. This is uh, Miroljub Jeftic, who is for decades already uh, main person in the public sphere or let's say academic sphere who is you know dictating what is going on in the, uh, regarding the religion and influencing the society extremely in a bad manner so this is uh, 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 and he's of course approaching the religious research from the from the secular uh, uh, point of uh, but I don't want to go any further in this we can debate afterwards now uh, uh, back to my what I was telling uh, uh, is that you know of course then if, if, if this the situation is like this you are forced to go and to try to find some alternative ways how you can deal with the research uh, with academic religious uh, uh, academic research in this uh, particular case religious studies and then you go into that let's say the the field of let's say NGOs what you are uh, Ahmed uh, mentioned it one of the uh, 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 fields of this uh, whole project is the the NGOs so a lot of uh, people a lot of people are trying through NGOs uh, to try to conduct some kind of let's say re research uh, uh, and to do some work yeah in religious studies but then again, we have a lot of uh, uh, you know challenges. I don't. I'm not saying uh, that it is not. Uh, it is not that, that it doesn't exist. It did exist. The, it, uh, a lot of NGOs produced uh, significant and important works and very valuable works. But of course, you know, uh, always when we are speaking about NGO sector, as maybe some of you know who are coming from the NGO sector, is that you know. Uh, the problem of funding. So you are always in this some kind of you know of of uh, of uh, you know uh, you know uh, there is always you know problem. Will you get funding or not? So uh, uh, and there I think that you know uh, if we are talking about this uh, particular project or what I can say from from Serbia because I think that my 
time is running out. Uh, I will conclude with this, you know, that, uh, and but because also you, what you said, Ahmed, about the needs, I think that what is extremely important for the outside players, uh, that they understand that they have to support immensely the uh, 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 independence of academic academic institute academic academic field such you know in academics in Serbia because uh, because of all the, what I have said and also that they try as they can uh, to also support if you are talking about the religious studies the faith based NGOs that are trying to do. Uh, let's say uh, the job that uh, should be, uh, be done in the academic institutions, government institutions, and other institutions, because uh, the, the NGOs are the only, let's say, the last, uh, let's say, last resort that has some kind of academic independence. I will stop here. I have a lot of other theses, but I see that my 10 minutes are already gone. Uh, but of course, uh, everyone who is interested, I can, uh, and I am uh, gladly, I'm glad to, to participate in the debate and to answer all the questions or to discuss all the questions or ideas or whatever. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, very interesting take on this uh, topic and actually, uh, you surprised me because I'm not sure, you see, if if what you uh, proposed at the end goes beyond the scope of the project, but definitely uh, we will uh, make the minutes and share just to see what other uh, people in the consortium uh, think. Um, I failed to mention in the beginning, I think it's very, very relevant that um, AU uh, has done uh, quite a lot of research on Roma, uh, especially Roma Muslims, which is you know the the topic uh, people usually uh, usually avoid or uh, researchers usually uh, avoid so he's a pioneer in that in that area uh, thank you again uh, ivan we go to professor kovac now uh, professor kovac joins us from the catholic theology uh, in, at the university of uh, zagreb um, uh, he is the, the chair or the head of the Department of Fundamental Theology and very important for us just to note that he, he is interested in Christian Muslim uh, relations. Uh, Professor Kovac, you may want to add something else from your bio, which is very relevant for the, our discussion today. Otherwise, Mike is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you hear me? Yes? Okay. Uh, so hello, hello everyone. Uh, I am glad also to participate in this online dialogue session. Uh, I prepared a text. It will be easier for me to speak. Uh, I will try to share with you some general information related to the religious research in Croatia, primarily from the Roman Catholic perspective. Uh, first, uh, I have to say that the most of uh, inhabitants of Croatia do not identify themselves with the Balkans, but as part of Western and Central Europe. There is different reason for that, but it's important to say. This fact uh, essentially indicates that religious and theological research in Croatia is more focused on topics related to Western Europe than on topics related to the so-called Balkans. I say this with great respect to my dear colleagues from Bosnia, from Serbia, and from other neighboring countries, but that is a, an important fact, I think. I would uh, distinguish two types of religious research. First, research conducted by religious academic institutions. Second, research conducted by civic academic institutions. In Croatia, uh, we have four faculties of Catholic theology, two in Zagreb, one in Split, and one in Giacomo, and two affiliated theological religious colleges in Rijeka and Zadar. 
about, about 150 scientists and professors are employed in these institutions. Altogether, we have over 15 scientifically relevant journals in the field of theological and religious studies. Uh, in Zagreb, we have also a Catholic university. Uh, in Croatia, also three Protestant high colleges. All this is quite a lot for a small country of 4 million inhabitants as Croatia. The fields of research of this theological institution or journals are very wide, from philosophy to all domains of systematic and practical theology. In my opinion, several areas of research dominate. For example, the relationship of church, Christianity, and religion to the modern or postmodern secular society. Also, since 1992, confes confessional religious education has been in public school. That is why research into the methodology, results, and future of religious education in school is an always current topic but also sometimes a subject of controversy. In recent years, several scientific national or international projects have been launched involving theologians. I would single out the value research project in Croatia according to international research called European Values Studies. I would also mention a new four-year project of my faculty in Zagreb in which I personally participate. The name of the project is The Contribution of Religious Education to Coexistence in a Multicultural Society. The aim of this project is to explore the contribution of religious education on primary and secondary schools in Croatia and to compare it with the religious education in some other European countries such as Austria, Belgium, Germany, Ireland and Italy. Regarding uh, religious research in civilian academic institutions, I would just say that the faculties of law, sociology and philosophy of different university of Croatia in Zagreb, Split, Rijeka, Zadar, or Osijek, attach more or less importance to religious issues into their different departments. Here, the dominant research themes are the place and the role of religion in secular, in secular society, the religious freedom and civic tolerance, multiculturality and interculturality. Uh, final, finally, I would like to mention a few topics that seem important to me in the field of current religious research in Croatia. First of all, it is important to permanently develop collaboration and interdisciplinarity with other social and natural sciences, sciences and humanities. Uh, it is also important to develop a theology or religious research that will be a creative contribution in the social community. In this, rega in this regard, it is very important to promote ecumenical, interreligious, and, inter and intercultural dialogue and researches. Croatia has 22 national minorities and 52 registered religious communities. It is important to know them and to collaborate with them and to integrate them in the society. Uh, I can say also that we have a very good relation uh, with the Islamic community in Croatia. 
religious research related to migrants and the migrant crisis, which is constantly growing in our region, should also be developed. It is also urgent to work on the prevention of fundamentalism, religious and political extremism and violence, especially with the younger generations. One always important area is to work and to promote reconciliation and peace among the peoples of ex-Yugoslavia. Finally, although Croatia does not identify itself with the Balkans, it is necessarily orientated towards the countries of the region. This means that the religious research of the neighboring, neighboring countries should concern us. We face similar questions or problems, and we can solve them working together, respecting our specificities and differences. It will be all for this moment. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Kovac. That again was very systematic, I think, and very, very uh, useful in understanding the research uh, field, research, religious uh, studies um, field in, in Croatia. Uh, of course, uh, when we prepared this, I had this in mind that uh, you are here as a guest mostly. We understand that Croatia it does not, or most Croatians do not see themselves as part of the Balkans. Uh, Thank you. Uh, we hope to uh, discuss some of the uh, ideas you raised. We go next to uh, Ioannis Kaminis, who is a PhD candidate at the Sofia University St. Clement Ohritsky. Uh, he was very strongly recommended to uh, us by his mentors. His uh, MA was on the history of Bogumilism uh, from the 10th to 13th century, which is now another dimension of, of uh, religious, religious studies. Uh, Ioannis, if you want to add something uh, else, uh, some more uh, info from your bio relevant for uh, our discussion uh, today, please do so. And Mike is uh, yours. Yes, uh, thank you. Can I, can I share the screen also because I have a presentation? Can you see it? Not yet. One moment. Not yet. Yeah. Ah. Okay, it's coming. Okay. Ah. Yes. So now, ah, it's okay now. Okay. We speak about uh, the current landscape of religious studies in Greece uh, today and offer some insights about uh, challenges and suggestions. So I'm going to start by saying that uh, it is difficult to understand the landscape of religious studies in Greece unless uh, we gain an elementary knowledge of the third state relations in modern Greece. First of all, uh, the Orthodox Church enjoys the status of a national church, always had a vast presence and visibility in the national, cultural, and political life of the country. One uh, should also bear in mind that in the Article 3 of the current Greek Constitution, the Eastern Orthodox Church of Christ is considered the prevailing religion in Greece. Although this article is interpreted almost unanimously in a non-normative way. So it's based on statistical data according to which orthodoxy is the religion of the majority of Greeks. In virtue of this article, the Orthodox Church in Greece is recognized as a public legal entity. The same status is also assigned for historical reasons to the Muslim minority of Western Thrace in the northeast of Greece, this religious community. While all the other religious communities, the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestant Churches included, 
are either registered as private legal associations or are still seeking legal recognition. Besides that, the privilege of failing religions reflects in the educational system as well. For example, in Article 16, Paragraph 2 of the Constitution, this privilege is defined clearly. Education constitutes a basic, a basic mission of the state. The aim is the moral, intellectual, professional, and physical education of Greeks, the development of national and religious consciousness. According to some statistics of Pew Research Center, Greece has a very high proportion of Orthodox Christians in its population, 90%. About 9 in 10 of them say that they are proud to be Orthodox and that religion is very important to them. 62% of women say this compared to 48%. However, religion appears to have become less important to current adults since childhood nowadays. Currently, there are six higher institutions, education institutions in Greece that are engaged with religious studies. These are the two faculties of theology, one in the University of Athens and the other in the University of Thessaloniki. There are also four church academies, Athens, Hierarchy of Crete, Thessaloniki and Ioannina. Here we have to point out that the role of church academies is to prepare personnel, clergymen and laymen for the Orthodox Church in Greece. So they are focused mostly in Christian Orthodox theology. Almost the same applies for the theological faculties in the two universities. Ioannis, may I may I interrupt you, please? Yes. Uh, I don't know whether you are using um, earphones or uh, we we have a bit problem hearing you. Okay, so I don't know what could be the problem if you can check your uh, equipment. Yes, sorry. Sorry. Uh, now is it better? It is. It is, I think, a bit better. It's better. Okay. Yes. I think, okay. Uh, okay, I'll continue. I was saying that uh, the same applies for logical faculties in the two universities that are focused more on in Orthodox theology and the study of religion in general. Recently, however, an undergraduate program of Islamic studies, which was introduced in the Faculty of Theology in Thessaloniki, aiming at the scientific study of Islam, in its various historical and cultural contexts in general. The fact, uh, this fact seems uh, to suggest that these institutions depend on cultural and historical backgrounds while their activities seem to reinforce the traditional role of the Orthodox Church in Greece than to provide a constructive critique of the religious landscape. But besides these institutions, there is also the Volos Academy for the Theological Studies, which is a recognized research center from 2014 and functions as an open forum of thought and dialogue between the Orthodox Church and the broader scholar community. In an era of rapid upheavals and changes, it organizes events and publications about current challenges that orthodoxy and religion faces, such as globalization, ecology, fundamentalism, nationalism, and the overall relationship of orthodoxy with the contemporary world. It is in this spirit that the Volos Academy for Theological Studies abiding the tradition of critical reflection on timely theological topics, cooperates and remains in constant dialogue, dialogue with ecumenical bodies and other scholar institutions. In this way, by engaging with the current surrounding intellectual and cultural reality, the Volos Academy contributes substantially to the dialogue between orthodoxy and modernity. Nowadays, the academic discipline of theology has had a remarkable career, once held as the queen of sciences, but its status now has been questioned ever since and in the, in the secularized society, and it seems to be more under pressure. 
especially in the late modern period since 1960, has witnessed the emergence of a political and cultural context that has proved particularly conducive to the proliferation of new religious movements and beliefs. Actually, there is a well-documented shift from religion to spirituality, the turn to the self, the change of focus from external authority to inner experience. Moreover, the modern societies have witnessed a shift towards individual individualization, the result of which has been a turn away from difference to traditional sources of authority and a turn towards personal experience and freedom of choice. Added to this, globalization, migration, and technological advance have led to rapid recent changes in people's lifestyles, the corresponding result of which has brought even more complex changes to their self-identities. For example, the youth culture of the so-called Generation Y between 1982 and 2000, the benefit of higher rates of education and the growth of information technologies. Just to me that for a variety of reasons, society, particularly in Greece and in the Balkan region as a whole, is not becoming less religious, but differently religious. Undoubtedly, this phenomenon deserves more serious analysis and research from scholars of religion. The ties between the Greek state and the Orthodox Church in Greece are indisputable, and despite the pressure by Greek intellectuals on the government to officially separate education from religion, this has not yet happened. A recent striking example of this is the unsuccessful attempt of the former government to change religious lessons at school. The head of Greek Orthodox Church, for example, Archbishop Hieronymus, dismissed this effort as a fruitless affair that will cause great damage to education and provoke a rupture in relations between church and the state. However, we have to point out that the current curricula in religious studies in secular education are more than especially if we compare them with earlier eras. For example, current issues such as the Christian community in a pluralistic and multicultural world, Christianity and secularism, the incompatibility of Christian morality with fanaticism are examined. Furthermore, the major religions of the world are also presented and explored. The course of religious studies in school provides scientific explanations and a more critical approach to the study of religion as well. Aware of the fact that theology strives for truth, teachers explore with their students important issues about church, life, history, and society. This approach does not presuppose any religious commitment and aims at the essential contribution of the course in the literacy of the students and their personal development. Another crucial issue for religious studies in Greece is the teaching of natural science, especially of biology and the biosciences. Religion used to provide an answer to almost every aspect of human life. Today, however, the majority of people, when they seek answers to the so-called big questions, often turn to the natural science and technology. Additionally, development in genetic engineering, tissue engineering, robotics, and artificial intelligence will have great implications in the way that we perceive religion and transcendence. This means that there is an urgent need for adjustment of the curricula to theological and religious studies in order to align them with the scientific discoveries that shake the foundations of most religious traditions. Such an adjustment will lead inevitably to a meaningful dialogue between religion and science, as any scientific discovery or technological advance that may have a potentially strong impact merits careful analysis from all angles and especially from scholars of religion. It is our firm belief that the aforementioned challenges can trigger a revival of religious studies in Greece and provide an incentive for new research programs and ideas. The resilience program can also offer much in this perspective by providing an infrastructure platform that will be indispensable part of every future research related to the religious studies, as well as by addressing the challenge of religious diversity and promoting the virtue of tolerance. 
Undoubtedly, access to valid knowledge can fa facilitate dialogue, mutual understanding and coexistence, especially in the Balkan region, which has been traumatized so many times by various ethnic and religious conflicts. Re resilience's motto, serving research, building knowledge, can encourage citizens of different societies to accept in their respective religious beliefs. Moreover, reliable knowledge about these beliefs can foster among them the effective recognition of human rights and an understanding of the values on which a peaceful and productive coexistence is based. In fact, it can lead to the awareness that they are brothers and sisters because they are children of God. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ioannis. Uh, unfortunately, the connection uh, didn't wasn't of, of much uh, assistance here, but uh, yes. your presentation helped us follow what you what you say. It's obvious that Greece is a, a quite a unique um, case uh, in this uh, on this topic. But uh, I, yeah, I hope that we will have uh, you in the discussion as well. Uh, please share with us your PowerPoint if you don't mind. Um, okay. Without any further ado, let's go to Professor Velinova. Uh, professor Velinova comes from the center, uh, is professor at the Center for Slavo-Byzantian Studies, that's at least at the Sofia University. This is what I gather. And uh, uh, four years ago, she published uh, a book, uh, Clement of Ohrid and the Beginning of Bulgarian Literature. So, so she does uh, deal with uh, Middle Ages and all that entails in terms of dealing with uh, early resources, manuscripts, rare books, and so on, which is one of the issues, uh, aspects in focus of resilience. Professor Velinova, please, the mic is yours. Thank you. Uh, before the beginning of my short report, I will inform you that I prepared uh, short information about the situation in Bulgaria with the institutions dedicated to the religion studies and the possibility of our university to contribute uh, resilience uh, with the working of uh, medieval documents, archives and all printed books. So I will uh, separate my report in two parts. The first one is more informative. The second is uh, dedicated to the suggestions about the further work of our project. When we talk about a uh, uh, specialized scientific approach to religions, res respectively their systematic study, we must emphasize that in Bulgaria, like most of the Balkan countries, the society is multi-religious. This is the result of historical circumstances that have left their mark uh, until the moment of the country's entry into the modern and postmodern era, uh, era. Until uh, eight, uh, 1878, Bulgaria did not have the status, the status of a sovereign state because its territory was within the borders of the Ottoman Empire. After the uh, successful end of the uh, war between Russia and uh, the Ottoman Empire, which uh, led to the liberation of uh, Bulgaria. After two uprisings and another war, were needed to achieve independence in 98. And after uh, that date, part of the territories in inhabited with Bulgarians remain outside the borders of the Free Kingdom. The consequences of these events can still be felt today, but uh, this. Uh, that uh, will be not the focus of my uh, presentation. It is only the most general framework which explains the peculiarities of the religion studies in Bulgaria. According to the official data from the statistics in Bulgaria from uh, 1901 to 2001 for a century, the percentage between the representatives of the different denominations has been relatively stable. In 90, uh, 1910, the Orthodox Christians were 80%, in 201, 82%. Respectively, the Muslims were 14 against 13%. The Catholics fluctuated between 0.6 or 0.7% of the 
also is the uh, valid for the Protestants, and the Jews were about one percent. The other de denomination uh, are determined to one uh, to excuse me zero dot three percent. This uh, diversity of the population predeter predetermines some peculiarities also in the process of scientific research. Traditionally, uh, the emphasis in, uh, is uh, on institutions dedicated to the orthodox theology, it's normal for Bulgaria, and theological schools for priests existed in Bulgaria as early as the 19th century, traditionally associated with uh, the great monasteries. The Soviet Theological Seminary uh, was uh, officially opened in 1903. Uh, there was a school for, ch school for church music uh, in the Rila Monastery. The Theological Seminary in Plovdiv was opened in uh, 1930-40 as uh, a successor of the secondary theological school in Prilip. And these were the uh, schools for priests, which uh, uh, had more practical uh, goals than uh, scientific research. The next level of high, uh, higher education and scientific uh, research of the uh, religions is, uh, was carried out at the Faculty of Theology of Sofia University, uh, Sofia University uh, and uh, it was founded in 1923. All these institutions uh, unfortunately, were limited and relatively isolated from the general educational and scientific research process during the years of the atheistic communist uh, regime, when the study of religious was seen as a propaganda hostile to the society. But despite the restrictions, the Bulgarian Orthodox Church managed to, man, uh, to maintain uh, relative independence and to continue teaching the traditional, the traditional disciplines to train, albeit to a limited extent, priests to prepare monks and so on, even to establish uh, its own scientific institute, the Ecclesiastical, Historical and Archive Institute, which is existing until today. Uh, it is a well-known fact that the state intervened in the affairs of the church during this period so that uh, we will not uh, dwell on these details. Uh, it can be said in generally that the study of religion in this period by secular institutions, however, even well intentioned, was primarily for the purpose of uh, negliciting religious beliefs and tradition in traditions among the population, regardless of uh, denomination. The study of religion uh, was incorporated in other related scientific disciplines, such as history, philosophy, history of literature and uh, culture, and uh, etc. However, there is no denying the efforts made uh, at the state level to preserve cultural artifacts, both real church monasteries, mosques, synagogues, and movable icons, manuscripts, archives, and documents. After the changes in Bulgaria, the 90s uh, are a time of restoration of the institutions and increasing of both their number and diversification of their profile. Theological faculties, uh, faculty were, uh, was established at the University of Veliko Ternovo in 1991, and the Department of Theology was established at the University of Plovdiv within the Faculty of Philosophy and uh, History. Uh, at the beginning uh, uh, of the 1922-23 uh, was established in Bulgaria also the secondary school for uh, Muslim studies in the town of Schumann. In the early 1930s, this high school was uh, uh, open, uh, a high school was opened for him which after 1945 was closed. In 1991, the High School for Islamic Studies was re-established. Its activity lasted for seven, seven academic years. And at the suggest, suggestion of the Muslim chief Mufti's office, it was uh, transformed into a higher institute since 1998. So we possess also a higher Islamic institute. 
For several years now, the specialty of Hebraistic was, uh, has been established at Sofia University. And it is uh, accompanied also uh, by a secondary school with uh, Hebrew as the main foreign language, which works closely with the Ronald Waldorf Foundation. The picture in general give, uh, gives an idea, an idea of the opportunities and prospects for religious uh, research in Bulgaria. The main uh, tasks that could be realized within and with the help of the tools, digital and real offered by the Resilient Project are uh, the following, the most important, of course. First, uh, establishment on a scientific network like a uh, uh, infrastructure of all institutional listed uh, and interested for exchange of scientific information, joint uh, initiatives, seminars, conference, congress, etc. And of course, uh, similar activities have been carried out so far, but closer coordination between these institutions will lead to better results. The second is the focusing on training specialists, on training specialists familiar with all denominations represented in Bulgaria, uh, which could be work, could work in several uh, areas, international cooperation and interreligious, of course. Uh, religious education in primary schools as an optional subject, promoting the principles of equality and tolerance of different religions. The third uh, goal of the project as we see it, uh, is uh, enlarging the educational program in religious studies in the university, especially in the master degree programs, and uh, also uh, using the, the opportunities offered by the programs of student mobility and the possibilities of the resilience project. The next uh, point which I will discuss is the use of digital resource provided by the project and enriching uh, of this uh, resource by the resource uh, of the University of Sofia. In this aspect, Sofia University provides access to work with specialized collections of manuscripts, and at this point Greek and Slavonic, all printed books, Greek and Slavonic, and archives. The manuscripts are mostly religious in content and are a solid basis for conducting systematic research in the field of religious studies, history, theology, uh, even, social, uh, uh, even social studies of uh, religion and so on. In addition to the country's traditional documents related to the Christian religion, the documentary research concerning the Islamic religion is very well represented. Uh, maybe some of you know, but uh, uh, we have uh, a great uh, resource of uh, Ottoman archives in the National Library. They should be promoted, including uh, through the individual activities in the project. This goal responds to the need of increasing the uh, effectiveness of national research system, particularly by employing innovative IT and technological solutions that are intended to reformulate the research praxis in the field of religious studies to have a positive impact on the quality of research performance and AU and national levels. Solutions are expected to stimulate the innovation uh, in the field of religious studies as well as in a broader perspective uh, of digital humanities. Uh, maybe the project, uh, the resilience uh, like uh, infrastructure, will seek um, disruptive technologies, especially the, uh, deriving from the IT sector, which can benefit both the target communities of scholars working in religious studies and a potentially broader audience. And now let me uh, present the possibility of our uh, institution the Sofia University, which can involve also other institutions in this uh, process. Um, a great number of Turkish archives of the Ottoman Empire are kept in Bulgaria in the National Library. For example, exists a separate Oriental collection 
The collection uh, contained Arabic manuscripts, all printed books, and archival documents in Ottoman, Turkish, Arabic, and Persian. It houses 400 manuscripts, 2,000 volumes of all printed books, and about a million sheets of documentary archives presented in 342,000 uh, archival, archival units. The archival documents cover the period from the 15th to the beginning of the 12th century and reflect a wide range of political, economic, social, and cultural topics. The earliest manuscripts uh, date from the beginning of the 11th century. It's a copy of a collection of hadiths compiled by Al-Bukhari and especially valuable according to the specialists of the department is the a copy from the 1556 of the work of the Arab geographer Ali Drisi. I have this information because the uh, well-known specialist Yanka Kenderova is a member of our scientific council and she was so kind to inform me about the most important uh, samples in the collections and about the uh, topics of the archive documents. In the center of Andujev, uh, which is part of the University of Sofia, also uh, are kept 320 uh, Arabic manuscripts in Arabic, Ottoman, Turkish, as well as several samples of the so-called Karaman Lee, very good uh, known, uh, one of the most striking example of cultural synthesis and symbiosis in the Balkans. Uh, especially of these collections, we are looking for opportunities to digitize the manuscripts. Uh, among them, there is a Quran, there is a grammar of the Arabic uh, language, there is a theory of the Arabic poetry, and so on. And uh, this will make them more widely available to modern researchers. Our collections of Greek and Slavonic medieval manuscripts and documents are already digitized and provide the opportunity to work remotely. And we wish to achieve the same situation for the um, collection, for the Islamic collection. The high quality digitization uh, service will support the easy access to the object with distance location or restricted access in general and uh, just uh, foster access to their credible representation. Uh, furthermore, the digitization efforts are also a step towards the preservation of, the, uh, of these objects, providing their safely stored copies and to make them more accessible for all the specialists which are interested in the history of uh, religions and which uh, have the um, wish, which uh, are expressing the wish to work with the, these primary sources about the history of the religions. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Velinova. Uh, very, I think, detailed uh, survey of uh, research infrastructure when it comes to religious studies. So I think we got a very good insight. Uh, we are behind the schedule. So instead of me going over some of the uh, ideas and we have, I think, heard a lot, uh, learned a lot, both about research infrastructure related to religious studies and challenges and specific uh, features. Uh, I would rather uh, use the rest of our time um, to give the opportunity to the audience uh, to share their ideas, pose questions to our uh, speakers. But before that, if you don't mind, we did not record the session, so I didn't ask your permission and we didn't do it, but just for our uh, archives and proportional materials. If you don't mind switching on your cameras for a moment for us, Ahmed or Rasul, to take a picture just to, to be able to show to the world what we are doing. Just, just a moment and then we can go off again. Ahmed or Rasul, can you take a picture? Yeah, Rasul will do it. Okay. Yes, I'll do that. Okay, you have two, at least two panels uh, I see of, of yes, participants, so. We lost Professor Fikret, but okay. Tell us when you are done.
done. Thank you. Thank you, Resul. So um, I think it would be great to hear from audience. Any anybody who has comments, questions, or suggestions for us at the resilience. Uh, you would need to switch on your mic. Um, let me see what's going on in the chat. Uh, okay. Um, Nothing. I will. Uh, how do I share? Uh, how do I share the presentation immediately? I'm not sure how to do that, but uh, yeah. Okay, Ahmed can tell me that. Uh, any. Anybody? There should be a hand somewhere here in this, uh, but I don't see it right now. Rasul, where do, yeah. Uh, prof, uh, Professor Kovac, please go ahead. Switch on your mic and then go. You hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. There is no question, so <laughs> let me uh, just, uh, share with you some uh, thoughts um, um, uh, after uh, the, the interventions of uh, uh, um, the, the, the participant of this uh, session. First of all, when I said uh, that the Croatian doesn't uh, uh, identify them, themselves with Balkan, Personally, I don't have problems with that, but uh, it's a culturally very important to, to understand some kind of relationship with, between Croatia and the area, the region. And I think it, it, is, it determined a lot, uh, not only the scientific or uh, researchers, but also the political relationship. I think uh, the, religion, the, the, the religious studies can uh, uh, help to, to overcome that. Okay, this is one thing. Thank you. The, the second thing is, uh, uh, I, I would uh, uh, congratulate uh, to Professor uh, uh, Karcic and to uh, Professor Kostic, uh, especially. Uh, I think uh, the theme of religious pluralism, especially in our region, is very important. Uh, and also the, the theme of Islamic studies. Uh, but in a very, uh, I can say, it, um, objective way, not only doctrinal way. And especially uh, the reflection on the modern Muslim thought is very important. And we can, I think Bosnia especially is a, is a fantastic elaborate, uh, laborator for that. Okay? And uh, I would uh, I would uh, congratulate you, Professor Kostic, uh, because it's very brave <laughs> what he says about Serbia. Uh, and the, the tendency uh, uh, of uh, ide ideological uh, mythologization of nation and religion and the church, it is very very uh, a big problem in, in all our region. Also, I think uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Professor Ioannis said it is very important that religious studies can be, should be recognized in the academical and social community. I think it's very important, this, this thing, to be recognized in the academical uh, um, community. And uh, at least uh, in Croatia, uh, we have still, uh, m most of people still have problems with ecumenism and interreligious dialogue. Uh, there is a lot of suspicions about that. And it's very difficult, very often, it, it's very difficult to speak or to promote this kind of term. Uh, even if the, the doctrine on the document of the Catholic Church is very open for this kind of term, but uh, these religious studies or ecumenism, interreligious terms, uh, our themes are still, uh, for most of people, uh, problematic. Uh, that's all for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Kovac. Uh, we have now a uh, next uh, question. Uh, I think, uh, who is it? Kobra? Uh, yes, Would thank you. you. Uh, yeah, please go thank ahead. You very much. 
Uh, actually, I have no question because uh, it's kind of too early for me to um, formulate a question. Um, I just wanted to thank you all for the organization and for the speakers for their very interesting presentations. I think it's very important um, to study the Balkans because it's still a very... Uh, I, there's still very much to do in the Balkans concerning um, the studies uh, and re researching what was going on there or religious studies, also Ottoman uh, studies. Um, I just wanted to thank you in this sense. Um, and um, I am, uh, well, I will start my PhD very um, recently. I, ha I have started and I will work at the University of Tübingen and I will, uh, in Germany, I will concentrate on Southeastern Europe, uh, especially on uh, Bulgaria. So for me, of, uh, especially the presentation of Mrs. Wellinova was very uh, interesting, especially the uh, manuscripts. And I want to thank you all. And um, I think we will all get the presentations or at least uh, the contacts of uh, the professor so that we can maybe do some network and then uh, ask our questions. I think I will profit very much from uh, Mrs. Or professor Wellinova. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Kubra. Thank you, Kubra. Um, we, will, uh, we will see what we can do. I think we can share both. Uh, we will ask people to share your, their contacts and uh, hopefully presentations. Uh, we go next to Ali Lukash. Ali, mic is yours. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu to everyone and welcome to uh, and I would like to thank you uh, for this uh, event. I have some uh, maybe uh, half questions, half remarks, uh, maybe like to stir up the discussion. Uh, we will see. Excuse me at first for the fluid intellectual flow, but uh, First, uh, I uh, was not since the beginning here, but maybe it was mentioned, maybe it wasn't. Uh, the question of Orientalism and Balkanism as a concept, as a um, sort of bias, how to uh, somehow uh, access to that or how to overcome that or if someone has some remarks uh, towards this big point because it is somehow manipulating the reality we are perceiving uh, here studying studying the uh, Balkans studying the religious uh, issues in a Balkan context this is the first question the second question we were speaking about national myths uh, it is connected or interconnected. The question of transferring the nationalist discourse from the Western Europe to the uh, Balkans or the Southeast Europe during the uh, mid and later 19th century. Uh, we need myths. Myth is not uh, bad at first. We leave myths and we have to have myths as an idea. We are somehow uh, approaching or we are leaving that idea. But the problem is when the myth is harming other people and this is frequently happening here in Balkans. This is the second point. Uh, how to see that myths and how the others see us. It's also deeply interconnected, intertwined. Uh, we can address those myths in academic researches, we can study the myths. We can make a sort of abduction of that myth. Is the second one issue. Uh, the third one is uh, also a theoretical in the terms we are speaking about Balkans and we somehow, uh, we somehow assume we know what we are speaking about but uh, in the field deeply as it was mentioned with uh, I think Professor Kovac uh, majority of uh, 
of researches in Croat discourse are not uh, concerned with Balkan issues or, or are I uh, think they are somehow uh, oriented westwards. So it is the question of where the Balkan ends and begins. This is also connected with the first one. So I would ask uh, whomever to uh, give me some reactions maybe or uh, reflections what uh, was said. Thank you oh. very much. Thank, thank you, Ali, for your uh, comments and questions. Um, well, uh, I know at least some people would say that those who don't want to see themselves as part of the Balkans actually are excluding themselves from the emergence or the um, genealogy of Europe, you know, because Greece is there, so Greece is the, in the Balkans anyway. So. It's up to up to people to decide. Would any any uh, speaker like to respond to any of the three points uh, raised by Lukas? I find the first one um, interesting. For uh, it's something for us at Resilience to think about how and in what ways a religious infrastructure research sorry religious research infrastructure in religious studies could could uh, address the issue of Orientalism and Balkanism. But any of the speakers. Sure. Ahmed, I would like. Please go ahead, Prof. Uh, first about the Balkans. Here, I, I wish to start with, by mentioning uh, an excellent book by Maria Todorova, Imagining the Balkans. Uh, that book, uh, I don't know uh, how, how much uh, our participants are familiar, is addressing issue of the definition and meaning of the Balkans, different uh, connotations, and Balkanism and Orientalism. As far as uh, Balkan is concerned, I would like to mention that it is a geographical and also cultural concept. Uh, for example, Berlin Congress of 1878 produced a document uh, with the title Settlement of the Dispute on Near East. Actually, Balkan in 1878 was uh, categorized by Near East. After that, we see that with the withdrawal of the Ottomans from the southeastern part of Europe, uh, the concept of Near East was moving towards East and uh, ba remain Balkans. Uh, I know that for many, uh, for people in Croatia and Slovenia, they don't like to be, most of, of, of the people there don't like to be categorized as, uh, or identified with the Balkans. And there is a well-known definition that Balkans start from the terrace of the hotel, hotel of Esplanada in Zagreb. So with the, with, the, with the moment with the train from Zagreb towards Bosnia, Balkans start. And uh, there is one very also interesting definition provided by an Austrian journalist in the beginning of 20th century, who said, uh, uh, answering question where Balkan start or where Middle East start, Near East start, and he said, the moment when you take train from Vienna and start the journey towards South, first moment when you smell kebab uh, means that you are already in the Balkans. But of course now, uh, uh, smell of kebabs could be found in Germany, in Austria, and other parts of Europe, so that definition is not also valid. Uh, so uh, that, uh, that is uh, what I wish just to mention about the Balkans and about uh, Islamic studies in the Balkans. I just wish to add that, for example, uh, study of oriental manuscripts and study of Ottoman archive material has been advanced uh, very much in the Balkans. And we have very good libraries. A colleague from Sofia mentioned that uh, about uh, collection of manuscripts and documents from Ottoman time in Sofia, in Sarajevo, Gazi Hustrabe library is well, well known by having more than 10,000 uh, manuscripts of, in Arabic, Turkish, Persian, and uh, thousands of Ottoman documents. So th that uh, area of the religious studies is uh, very quite uh, well developed. Uh, another issue which is becoming more and more important is issue of Islamic modernism in the Balkans. You know that uh, in 1980s, I started to study that phenomenon in former Yugoslavia. 
now we have uh, recently published book about Islamic reformism or modernism in Bulgaria and other parts of the Balkans as well. So that encounter between Islam and modernity is also one of the important topics for study. So that is for the time being. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Prof. And you just, with your uh, remarks on the usage of the Balkans, you reminded me of Arab negotiators at the Versailles conference. They were arguing, you know, for having an Arab state. And their, one of their arguments that they put forward was, you don't want to see the Balkans in the Arab world, you know? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> this Balkanization, Lebanonization, we use yeah. Lebanonization and they use Balkanization when they want to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, convince people that they shouldn't do certain things. Uh, I see uh, Ivan's hand up. Ivan. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, first of all, uh, I have two, two, two things to say. And one just uh, very um, quick, uh, my remark that uh, I, uh, you all, probably all of you noticed that I didn't give the uh, overview, but I did. I did this purposely because I think that there are mu uh, mu much more burning questions in Serbia than the time giving some kind of an overview. Uh, you can do it in writing, Ivan. Don't worry. Huh? you can do it in writing. Yeah, of course. I, I or uh, people can find out about this. Uh, the the thing is that the, the two, two things I would like to 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 first of all I would uh, like to give my thanks to 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 Professor Kolach, and I absolutely agree with him that the question of religious pluralism is extremely important. And uh, from my personal experience, uh, and this is uh, going to Professor Kolach, is in 2019, I organized the, the uh, uh, scientific conference here in Belgrade, which dealt with the religion, citizenship, and uh, uh, religion and civic identity. And uh, what I found striking is that, for example, we had huge difficulties to to find the pe people from Catholic uh, Church and representatives from the, the Croatia uh, who are willing to come to, to Belgrade and to present their, their work. And I think also on, but this is on the side note, but what is for me much more important is that I urge if Professor Kovac or, or is in the position that, uh, that you know, the we in Serbia, we, we are in huge, you know, uh, uh, we lack the literature from the Catholic uh, perspective and Catholic Church in our uh, bookshops, uh, or if you go somewhere, you know, to, 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 to get familiar with the, with the current state of Catholic thought and Catholic Church, we are lacking. And especially, this is extremely important in the context of Catholic Church in Croatia. As you know, and this is, of course, directly uh, uh, in, in direct connection with the political situation in the Balkans, uh, and especially between the relationship between Serbia and, and Croatia. So we need the contra-narratives contra from Croatia that we can debate and let's say to, to, to provide uh, the, the answers to enormous uh, literature that is produced by the Serbian academic circles, nationally oriented, nationalistically oriented, which are constantly attacking Catholic church and particularly uh, in this case, uh, Croatian Catholic church which is absolutely taking enormous uh, dimensions in the last five, six or 10 years. I wrote a, a, a piece about this, by the way, uh, it, you can find it uh, on Al Jazeera Balkans about this. The second thing is that um, about the myths, you know, someone said, I don't know anymore who, uh, that they are not bad. Uh, I don't share this view at all, uh, uh, especially if we come to academia. Myths are myths, and myths are maybe useful, and maybe they are something uh, needed, but they're needed and useful for political projects and politics, and maybe the construction of 
identity or national identities and so on and so on. Of course, the myths have their roles. But I'm talking here about the myths when the, uh, 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 in the context of Serbia, which are then uh, turned into the, let's say, academic or let's say historical truth. Okay. In that regard, myths are extremely problematic. And we have the tendencies in the last, as I said, 20 years, that we have enormous production also from the religious institutions who are producing myths as a historical facts and or let's say as some kind of academic truth okay and in that sense you know you are raising generations and generations on absolutely false uh and <laughs> i can say fairy tales you know uh which doesn't have any kind of connection with what is uh, 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 based in history and in, in, in facts, uh, historical facts. So in that sense, the myths in Serbia uh, and this mythologizing, you know, what I said in my, my first, uh, when I had my first talk, is they have extremely, extremely dangerous and, and very bad uh, 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 outcome or let's say influence on academia here in Serbia. And just one uh, last thing is that I don't be so critical about Serbia, uh, is that I have to, to notice that there is a younger generation in the Serbian Orthodox Church, which is extremely brave, who is, criti who is critically, you know, very engaged, who are proposing very interesting ideas, and, but again, we are coming to that to, when we are speaking about them, they're absolutely ostracized by the system, but not only by the system of the Serbian Orthodox Church who are threatening them, who are expelling them from the faculties. They even banned them uh, to show in the public spaces anywhere anymore. And not only that, they are under the threat by the government itself. So this is, I wanted to say that the Serbian church has very positive uh, individuals inside the church, but they are absolutely marginalized. And in the sense, someone uh, mentioned the digitalization or let's say online sphere or these alternative ways. In this sense, resilience project can help that, you know, that, that we create some kind of safe spaces or let's say alternative spaces where we can express ourselves, those who have some, you know, problems to, to, to find a way, how can they express themselves? So this is uh, just to, or, or, or uh, uh, someone shared this, uh, 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 thanks, Ioannis, uh, about the science intelligence in Serbia. So uh, thanks. and. Uh, I'm sorry if I took. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Ivan. Now let's let me uh, try to uh, combine two things. We promised you this is not going to last more than ninety minutes. So I, uh, probably there are people who need to to go. I would like to uh, thank everyone. If you feel you still have uh, something to share with us, please do so either with Ahmed or me or whoever. Um, we will um, ask our um, speakers who did prepare some notes to share them with us or PowerPoints. Uh, I'm not, I have taken notes of Professor Fikret or others who don't have them in writing. So we don't want to put extra, extra load on you. Uh, so thanks everyone. Uh, those who can remain with us, I see two hands. I see uh, uh, Haris uh, Bilalovic, raise his hand and um, he, he, in the meantime, I think, no, uh, he withdrew, I don't know. Uh, Haris, would you still like to uh, say something? So um, those of you who can stay with us for another maybe five minutes or so, please do others, uh, thanks a lot and see you on some other uh, occasion. Haris, please go ahead. Thank you, professor. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes, we do. Um, first of all, I would like to once again express my gratitude for invitation to participate in today's webinar. I found it very useful and informative because this is the very first time I do hear about Resilience Project, which has been uh, ongoing in the preparatory stage for three years now. 
I will briefly introduce myself, Haris Bilalovic. I'm head of religious affairs at BHRT, radio and television of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I would like to use this opportunity just briefly to mention that I've enrolled myself in a master program of uh, interreligious uh, and uh, peace building studies at the University of uh, Sarajevo, conducted in cooperation with uh, three universities. Uh, University um, Vasilije Ostroške, Fočok uh, Theological University, Catholic uh, Theological University here in Sarajevo, and Faculty of Studies. And it would be very interesting to observe in the future to come as Project Resilience develops further, and uh, its very ambitious portfolio, from what I can remember, uh, it was uh, in upcoming 40 to 50 years of development to see how the interreligious component tributes uh, to the scientific um, portfolio. I did witness in our program a highly motivated group of people um, and students from different uh, academical backgrounds, NGOs, theologians, uh, psychologists, uh, students of uh, political studies. And I think it's a very good impetus of a um, variety of perspectives that could be uh, widely uh, used in a productive way, also in a project uh, portfolio of the resilience. That would be all. Thank you very much once again. Thank you, Haris. Thank you for bringing that, uh, that up. Yes, indeed, I agree with you. Um, uh, uh, I have Dr. Asim, he, he wrote something. Dr. Asim, if you are with us, why don't you briefly say this? Although I'm not sure Professor Fikret is still with us. So he probably cannot hear you. Let me just check. I don't see him anymore. So he probably left. So it's up to you. If you would like to share with others what you had in mind. Um, yes, thank you, Ahmed. Um, I hope you can hear me. Yes, we do. Um, I'm not sure if my image, okay, sorry. Yes, thank you. Um, I had a question for um, Professor Karcic, but I would be happy to hear from other participants um, equally so. And my question is related to a point that was raised by him and maybe by some others, which is that uh, the problem of funding in the field of religious studies. And uh, at one point, Professor Karcic also specifically said that often the best research in the field comes from international scholars. Uh, and I think this is partly a reflection of the funding problem. So uh, my observation and the question, my observation is that uh, this fact, I agree with him, uh, probably sometimes also influences or impacts on the choice of topics and themes and maybe the approach of scholars who come from abroad. We do not always get what we want maybe regionally to be the focus of research because we lack funding. Um, I think it's, it's not difficult to agree with that. So hopefully resilience will uh, be um, a framework within which this imbalance can be um, uh, addressed. And my question to him or others participants, if they wish to comment or answer is, what are the topics and themes that they find to be understudied um, from uh, their perspective, which they would like to see explored uh, in the future. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Asim. Um, yeah, uh, we all hope that resilience, I'm sure it cannot resolve the, the, the funding issue, but hopefully it can contribute um, uh, to, to to the resolution of that uh, of that problem, I have a note. Sorry, you cannot move a video while someone has their hands raised. Okay, I, I have no idea what this is. Okay, thank you. Anybody who would like to respond to Dr. Asim's question or questions, rather? Yeah. Uh, see, I have, if if I may, uh, abuse my role as moderator. Um, two things. I have written uh, a small blog on the resilience uh, website on uh, what uh, what it looks like to do uh, research in the Balkans in, well, that was late 90s. 
uh, I remember spending a lot of my time and energy and, energy and money uh, while, while I was studying in Malaysia, trying to copy or buy, procure books that I would carry with me all the way from there because I knew um, most of it is not available in, in Bosnia. So a lot of money, a lot of uh, hours of uh, my time were actually spent doing that. Uh, well, that's one huge advantage that um, researchers in, in, in well-established universities have. They don't have to worry about, uh, you know, usually at least the, the, the references and basic, basic literature. Uh, however, when it comes to find funding, I was surprised a few years ago, um, spending a month at the National Research Center in Paris. I was surprised that they too have huge funding issues in the sense that, for instance, even senior researchers don't, don't have their own offices. They share offices. So you have days in the week when you come. You come Tuesday and Wednesday, and I come, I don't know, Monday and Thursday or whatever. You know, second, they are constantly in the um, research funding application uh, cycles. One ends, another starts. So I, I thought it's, it's in, in their world, it's a bit better, but when it comes to that, not really. Um, yes, uh, library facilities, access to uh, um, articles, journals, and online and so on is much better, way much better. But when it comes to some other things, it's also, it's also a, a constant, constant struggle. I don't know whether this makes you feel better, but that's that's how I saw it. Uh, Ali, you have you raised your hand again. Yes, I raised my hand again. Maybe uh, to have some comments on uh, the purpose of uh, professors uh, Fikret Karcic and Asim Zubčević uh, about this. Uh, uh, foreign researchers, me, myself, I am foreign researcher, so maybe I can give some uh, perspective. I mean, uh, this is a quite a tricky uh, thing. First, we have our own problems here in Balkans with the ideologization, with the nationalist myth and so on. I will a little bit defend myself when I said that a myth is uh, not always bad as myth. I mean that by that as a myth, as a story with some purpose, with some meaning. Because of myths, we understand the world. Uh, but uh, historical myth, especially when it is harming other people, is incre incredibly dangerous. Uh, this is the first thing. The second thing uh, you don't, uh, or I would like to say, we should not remember, or we should not forget that the foreign researchers approach to the Balkan issues with their own myths, with their own biases at first. The second, the sources they use are also uh, local sources, what are already biased by the national myths or the propagandas we are experiencing here in Balkans. The third thing is uh, the researchers, especially from the Western Europe, German speaking or English speaking, please don't be offended if someone is, is uh, listening, uh, are uh, not so uh, well versed or not so familiar with the contexts, uh, with the uh, inside the perspectives. So I am quite uh, skeptical uh, in from the from the point how much they are able to uh, go in deep, how much they are able to actually comprehend the situation the context, let's say there is a book of uh, Charles Norris on uh, the Islam in Balkans and he spends maybe from 30 to 40 pages just explaining what Zadruga means. The Agrar Collective uh, and so and so what we know. Uh, so uh, there is problem to deliver the meanings to the Western discourses. So we have problem upon problem. Yeah. 
Yeah, and maybe that's the direction. I think the, the solution can be with the cooperation and with communication between Balkan and out of Balkan researchers with the insiders and outsiders. And uh, from what I uh, firmly believe and what's part of my PhD dissertation in Komunus University in Bratislava, uh, we are the anthropological approach. We are the uh, interviews and the semi-structured uh, or we have to uh, leave the people uh, to construct their world to help the people to tell their own story and i okay. think this is the way yeah thank you very much i think uh, we can we can put this to rest here uh, we have uh, certainly heard uh, a lot of good ideas uh, and uh, as actually, the discussion has taken us in the directions we didn't uh, probably think before. Uh, thank you very much. There is a lot to chew on in the coming days and weeks. Uh, hopefully, we stay in touch. Uh, and uh, we, if you don't mind, we may share um, invitations to other similar workshop, workshops. And of course, it's up to you if you find the topic of those new workshops, upcoming workshops of interest. To you so uh, once again thank you and uh, yeah please uh, stay in touch via our uh, social uh, networks and website if you don't already have too too much of of that thanks a lot especially to our speakers professor velinova professor kovac Ioannis, uh, ivan and uh, of course uh, professor fikri have a nice day bye bye <laughs>